Guys, what's up? My name's Swords, and today I'm gonna to talk to you about everything I learned playing in my first Apex Legends tournament. But before I begin, I wanna give a special thank you and shout out to Ronnie for inviting me onto her tournament team, Finicky for showing me the strategies of professional play and giving more insight into AOGS, and Exolved Esports for hosting the tourney and putting it together in a professional manner. As an Apex player myself, going from a pub stomper to a ranked player to playing in a tournament, I've seen and experienced all different levels of the game, and I think it'd be nice to share what I can reflect on over my experience with you all while it's still fresh. I played against players of all different skill levels in a true cross-platform tourney. There were some big names like Timmy or Madness, but it was really nice to see all different types of creators in this space. I've got a lot to talk about, so please like and subscribe for more helpful Apex content. Join our Discord with almost 1,500 members to talk about Apex or find a teammate, and come hang out with me on Twitch so you can see how I play live. Firstly, there's a lot to reflect on, but if I had to pick a good topic to begin this video's discussion and reflection points, I'd say that the most important thing to mention first is about where you drop, being prepared to drop somewhere else if your spot is contested by other players. You see, during practice with my team, we were fully prepared to land at launch site. We had a plan about where each of us landed, looted, where we'd meet up, and where we would rotate to next. But things didn't go to plan during the actual tournament. During our first game, on drop, another squad was already closer to launch site than us, meaning we had to land somewhere else. So at the last minute, we noticed a section of sorting factory that was available for us to loot, so we landed there. However, we didn't know that there was already another team that landed at the other side of sorting. So when we tried to loot the other half of the POI, we didn't know what we'd be getting into. So with less than half of the loot available at sorting, we were forced to rotate and try to find a good position with whatever loot we had. There really wasn't much time to go tread off and find better loot somewhere else, or we'd be risking getting into a fight too early. In tournament play, positioning is everything, even with bad loot. You just gotta make it work. But the key takeaway I got from this experience at this level of play that all of you can apply in your games is that your first initial drop into a lobby has a heavy influence on your chances of success. The loot you start out with will either put you at an advantage or disadvantage against the next engagement with another squad. One team may have shield batteries and lots of ammo, while another has no batteries and low on ammo. But fear not, this is why I learned why positioning and patience is even more important at this level of play than it's ever been. A prepared team without decent loot can still win a fight if they have a plan and good positioning. This happened to my team actually. There we were, surrounded by who knows how many teams. We were running super low on ammo, we were hugging the walls of an abandoned train car. Over time we finally figured that one of the teams was going to force themselves uh, toward our position. So when we decided to wait for that team and prepare for their attack, even though we were really low on ammo and I had grey armor, I still had my shotgun. So when they finally rolled up, we took them out and we got better loot. And at this point I realized, wow, my team's pretty good. But I also realized why teamwork and coordination is so incredibly important. Because without those words of communication, that fight could have been utter chaos. Planning needs to be super detailed. So learn from my experience and think about where your team needs to rotate to so that you make it safely into the next zone. Call out the direction of where enemy teams are, where your biggest threat is, where you need to focus, and who's watching what. The next thing I want to talk about that I took away from the tourney is that unnecessary damage hurts the entire team. Now what do I mean by that? You see, unlike pubs or even ranks sometimes, it's the team that shares everyone's resources, not you as an individual, unless it's your ammo. When holding down a position together with a team, it's so important to avoid taking damage for no reason because it reduces your entire team's shields and med resources. In the event of my tourney, our team was forced to hold down this position next to Sorting Factory while we were surrounded by snipers and other surrounding threats. But at the same time, we were also down and low on resources, so we had to be very cautious about corners and angles. We peek so that we don't take too much damage. Unfortunately, that didn't work out too well. As time went on, the ring started to close and it actually forced teams closer to us, giving us an adjacent team on a nearby building the opportunity to push up on us which forced us to move in an uncomfortable position. But we didn't have many options, and when I finally ran out of shield cells at an important moment, I knew that I should have avoided damage a lot more and not peaked as often. At the end of the day, you're sharing meds with your team, so the more you use, the less your team has for those clutch moments. 
to add on, I also learned it's a lot more practical for at least one person on your team to use some sort of long range weapon. Typically that's going to be your Gibraltar because at least if he takes damage, that arm shield is a good first layer of protection from incoming damage. Plus, the value of a good sniper or marksman is huge because that player can get shields up for the team. I learned this the hard way. As an Octane player, I was running a rushdown kind of loadout with an SMG or assault rifle as my primary weapon with a shotgun to support those close up fights. When I am in those close up fights, it really works out. But when I'm not and stuck at a distance away from enemies with, with the longer range weapon, I found that I couldn't do anything but wait and check my blind spots for approaching teams. There was this one instance where another player had me at a disadvantage with a 30-30 repeater while all I had was an R99 at a weird angle and this ultimately got me killed and put my team in a bad spot because I made myself vulnerable to damage. Having weapon diversity amongst your team that still works with the legend you're playing can help in those kind of situations at least easing some of the pressure off of your team while you have that one player posing a long range threat to other teams. So don't get me wrong, long range isn't everything. You're definitely going to want to have shotguns on your team and at the time of this video, the shotgun I wanted to use was the EVA 8 and that's because putting a purple shotgun bow on the EVA speeds up its fire rate and makes it do high amounts of damage in a short amount of time, which is really strong right now. So it helps a lot in those close range fights. Though mid range fighting is the most common, heck, a lot of teams was using the R301 during the tourney, so it's definitely a very reliable gun and I encourage you guys to use it too. This brings up a really good part of the video that I definitely think other pros could agree on after reflecting. Taking more risks. You see, typically your team wants to get that beacon scan then move on and hold down a good position in the ring. The challenge is getting to the ring and reaching that position alive as enemies take shots at you from all different directions. Typically you use bounce pads to make sure your team gets the rotation down. That's why Octane gets played a lot. But the challenge is going for risks that could benefit the team and put you in an even better position with greater odds. But as much as there is reward, there is still that risk. Even going for a loop in just down a ramp from your team is enough of a risk to get you down quick and out of the fight, which is why you have to literally always remain cautious. The trick is to not get too comfortable because you need to seriously be super aware of what's going around you, else you might be surprised to go down. I remember that I slid down a ramp and as as I approached this Lupin, I got shot down insanely fast by a team that was just lurking up from Sorting Factory. It's a shame too, because when I threw down my jump pad, they used the same jump pad to get onto the ramp, which unfortunately wiped my team. Which is why, be careful about the risks that you take. Because the risks that you take could end up, could end up taking you and your team out. The most important thing to know is that you won't always win. Letting you know the important value of failure so that you can reflect and look over what happened. Reflection is key to improvement. But all in all, it was an awesome time to help build connections with the community and see a lot of talent. So many good players. So much talent. I'd love to do another tourney in the future and give it my best shot. That being said, check out some more tips or discussional stuff on my channel for Apex Legends or other games. You take it easy and peace out.